and bolt their doors. Then the werewolf will begin searching for food, tearing to pieces whomever crosses its path. And when fully satisfied, it will go back in hiding in the depths of the woods until the next full moon. And if it finds a pack of real wolves, it will join them. Not until it is discovered and killed. Not until after death. Will it regain its human appearance? What's happening? What's going on? The girl's not as a yellow has disappeared. But why the torches? Why are you armed? We heard the howls of a werewolf. We gotta be ready for him. You never can tell. We gotta get him before he gets on. May the saints in heaven protect us! Are you sure Daniela has disappeared? She went out for a walk in the woods before dark. That's what we've heard. We've got to find her before it's too late. Come on, grab a torch. Join us.
What is it, darling? What's the matter? Are you dreaming? What is it, scream? Did you have a nightmare? What is it, dear? Did you have a bad dream, Daniel? Telephone our doctor immediately and tell him to come right over. Get a medicine, will you, Joanna? Right away, sir. You'll be all right, darling. Legend. Do you think this could be the cause of it, Doctor? No doubt about it, reading this ancient fairy tale, but above all, this extraordinary resemblance of your daughter Daniela with her ancestor. She's abnormally obsessed with it, I would say. Did you know the story about this ancestor? Oh, we talked about it around the house. But to us, it was just a legend. If we can't accept such ridiculous legends, we'd be mad. Yeah. It would be ridiculous to think that anyone could turn into a wolf on the night of the plenilunium and act like the beast committing animalistic acts, sexual and demoniacal. And yet lycanthropy exists, my dear Count. Are you suggesting that there is a... Please be calm. The phenomenon has already been analyzed. It was proven, really. But considering that your daughter has never had manifestations of this kind before, that which occurred last night, to be certain, was determined after she'd read that old fable, and particularly when she found that her ancestor, the protagonist of this weird fable, had a remarkable resemblance to her. Tell me, Count, how did your daughter come into possession of that old chronicle? I'm curious to know. Gangela. I just turned 13 when she experienced the violence of a bro who raped her. This shock was tremendous. A physician at the time advised a change of environment. I thought this place in the country would be ideal. A village Salis. My family's oldest house. How curious. In the Chronicle, I believe it says it was at Salis that your ancestor, affected with lycanthropy, was burned to death near the house in the forest. That villa in Salis belongs to my family since the Middle Ages, centuries. I would never have made it my house, my home. But the doctor advised that I move out there with Daniela and Irene. Irene? My other daughter. She's in America now, studying nuclear physics at Berkeley. A healthy girl, full of life. But Daniela has never been the same since she was raped by that maniac. She doesn't even go out anymore. Always alone. She's obsessed with fear. She seems to be repelled by the opposite sex. Unfortunately, there was a fine young man who wanted to marry her, but made advances to her too soon. She screamed and became quite hysterical. No doubt it's a sexual phobia caused by that unfortunate experience she had. <laughs> so then, you made your decision to live in the country. Yes, that's right, in Salis. And at a considerable sacrifice, too, for my business, my office. The villa was filled with antique furniture, dark drapes, a depressive atmosphere. So I transformed the whole place completely, inside and out. I wanted everything to be modern and bright. I even had a swimming pool built, and yet Daniela spends most of her time in the attic, strangely enough. Especially since Irene went abroad. It's an awful attic, but she likes it. She seems to be... Strangely fascinated, morbidly attracted to that old furniture. Apparently, rummaging in the trunk, she discovered that miniature and the chronicle she found amongst the old newspapers and documents. Don't leave Daniela alone, if possible. See that she gets lots of fresh air and sunshine, and don't forget, you must always be near her. This therapy can be very helpful to her. But you've got to be careful. You never know what can happen. What can happen if I don't leave her alone? The strangest things can happen to a person in this state of mind. You never can tell. Explain it to me. I don't understand. Well, the violence she experienced. This kind of attraction that she bears to the past. The nightmares. Those old papers she found in the attic. But above all, her extraordinary resemblance to this old miniature here. 
constitute a progression of facts that are heterogeneous, the components of which can be sought by psychiatrists or in the phenomena of parapsychology. My dear Count, when science decides to contribute more time to the study of extrasensory phenomena, I think that within 50 years it will make more progress in understanding the mental ills and psychological problems of mankind than our men of culture have done throughout the centuries. And without being called visionaries, prophets, or saints, or even crazy. Daniela, isn't it about time you came out? I don't want you to tire yourself. Come and lie in the sun for a while. Here I come, Father. How's my girl? Oh, wonderful. Happy? Oh, yes, and then it's so wonderful for you to be here with me. It feels good. It seems strange you wanting to stay with me, keep me company. Why, dear? It just never happened like this before. How come? It dawned on me all of a sudden while I was working in town. I told myself, you're an ass. You're a perfect idiot. My word, what are you doing here in town? You've got a house in the country. And a daughter, too. Well, of course, dear. That above all. Uh-huh. You know what I've been thinking? How about the two of us leaving the country for a while? Go on a trip. Where would you like to go? To Greece? To Spain? To Mexico? Count Mercedes. What is it, Anna? There's a kibble, sir. <sighs> Ah, it's Irene. They're arriving tonight. Go and prepare the room for them, Martin, and have Antonio get the car and pick them up at the airport at 6 o'clock. Very well, sir. That's the end of our vacation now. Welcome home, Martin. Thanks, Antonio. <laughs> oh, hello, Father. Well, you've given us a surprise, huh? Oh, hello, Daniela. Hello. Darling, Fabian, for God's sake, don't worry about the bags. Antonio will take care of them. Come here. I want to introduce you to my family. This is my father and my sister, Daniela. And this is Fabian, my husband. Yes, nuclear physics is an interesting field. I don't know if you intend to stay on, but should you decide uh, to stay here in Italy, I'm sure that I could really be of great help, you see. The director of the nuclear center happens to be an old buddy of mine. Ah, oh, that's just great. Though it's not the right moment to make such a decision. But I'm pretty sure we will, though we didn't plan on it. But it's not only what I decide, you see. There's Irene. <laughs> well, a parent always tries to keep his family close by, if possible. Excuse me. Daniela, listen, darling. You haven't said a word to me this evening. It seems like we're not even sisters. Aren't you glad I'm here? You don't act like it. What are you saying? I'm happy. I'm very tired tonight. The news of your arrival today with your husband and all the preparations just knocked me out. We'll have a long talk tomorrow. I've got a lot to tell you. And now I'm going to bed. I've got to get up early in the morning. Say good night for me. Daniela bids you good night, said she was tired and had to go to bed. Frankly, I thought my sister would share my happiness in being here. She seems so cold and attached. Don't mind her. She hasn't been well for saying she's just been nervous, that's all. Good night. We'll all go to bed. Good night, then. Good night, Father.
circle has been formed. We've been waiting, waiting. Observe my wounds. See what they've done.
Daniela. You're to come here when you need us because you belong to us. You will always belong to us, Daniela. You know this is the place. Don't ever be afraid. Your destiny is bound to mine. I will help you. Look at me. Look at my body. Look at me, Fabian. Oh, I could make you feel things it ain't and never could. Go on. Go on, touch me, Fabian. I want you more than I've wanted any man. <laughs>
her condition now, Dr. Anna. Is she any better? Well, she's calmed down a bit after treatment. It seems to be a state of nocturnal schizophagia. She's a hypomaniac, beset by delirium and phobic complexes. Pressure? Normal. When did she have her last attack? Immediately after the nurse put off the lights. She began to scream, so we gave her a sedative. The lip is a bit swollen, and the abdominal muscles seem knotted and hard. Mm, yes. Temperature? Rising. Wasserman? Negative. Cardiovascular shuttergraph. Normal. And the shock treatments, what results did you get? Pretty negative, but the alpha waves on the electrode encephalogram are quite regular and symmetrical. Do you suppose there may be a lesion of the brain? No, I doubt that, Dr. Reiner. In case of a, another attack, rather than pump her with drugs, it would be better to restrain her. She couldn't stand the drugs. Certainly in her condition, they could be dangerous. So you really don't think there's any brain damage? I rule out completely any lesion of the temporal lobe of the brain. Those large reddish splotches on her body are possible hematomas of a form of lupus systemicus. How about administering a therapy with cortisone and tetracycline? No, better to use narcosynthesis. Ah, my dear Dr. Trevell. I've been waiting for you to visit me. Don't you recall? Look, I've something to show you. This breast. Pretty nice, huh? Don't you admire a lovely breast? Doesn't it excite you? Breast, a leg, same thing to a doctor. Only part of the anatomy. Go to bed now. Oh, you're just kidding. This is a real woman. Don't you feel excited? <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> I'll leave my door open tonight. If you come and visit me, I'll be expecting you. Look, this is an urgent case. I recommend we operate tomorrow morning. Make all the necessary preparations. Blood test, electrocardiogram, the works, right away. Excuse me, Dr. Travell. He's on this floor, sir, just about finished visiting his patient. Thank you. I want the results of those tests early in the morning. Yes, doctor. Irene, you go on ahead. Go to visit your sister. I want to speak to Dr. Travell for a moment. I'll go up then. Oh, 
Unfortunately, the neuroplegic treatment did not give us the results we'd hoped for. You don't sound very optimistic, Doctor. These cases are not simple to cure. They're puzzling, too. The symptoms your daughter presents are anomalous, contradictory. Usually this kind of illness manifests itself during puberty, adolescence, while Daniela is a grown woman. And this makes it even more difficult. You're not telling me you haven't some cure for this illness, Doctor. Surely there must exist some cure that will improve her condition. There are cases in which a patient behaves as if he doesn't want to get well. Sometimes it seems as if he wants to hide his illness. Unfortunately, I believe this is the case with your daughter. It is clear that her personality has been shattered because of the influence of a violent neurotic charge. That which we learned about our ancestors is of great help. It's utterly imperative to make sure her brain's energy isn't released due to tension, the cause of which we don't really know, sir. Not terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I'd much prefer to delay my prognosis. I don't give up. Don't despair. We're doing all we can. What do you want? Why did you come here? Why, just to visit you, Daniela. Before now, I just couldn't, so please forgive me. But since poor Fabian's death, I lost all sense. <laughs> Fabian. You liked Fabian, didn't you? Sure you did. You liked making love with him. Daniela. What on earth are you saying? Well, I saw you making love with Fabian. You were obscene. Disgusting. But you liked it. <sighs> I like to make love, too, you know. I wanted to make it with Fabian, not that other one. But you're the one who makes it with Fabian. I hate you! I hate you! You whore! You whore! Go oh, fuck yourself! You dirty bitch! You! Get away from me, you hear? You whore! Oh, I don't want her to say I'm Get out of here! I don't want her to say you're gonna have to save me! Do you want some water? Yes, thank you. Please, nurse, untie me. Just for a little while. I can't stand it any longer. Please, I'm calm now. Don't be afraid. I'm not allowed to. I mustn't. I can't. You're a good nurse. Oh, please. Untie me. Untie me, please. Please. Calm. You please. have to calm oh, yourself. Please. You'll make yourself no. worse. You get out. Oh. Again. No. Oh. There now. No. Try to sleep a little. Tomorrow you'll feel much better. You'll see. That's a good girl. Damn you! You whore! You pig! You murderer! You bitch! You!
You're the girl who came here at the beginning of the month. I've been wanting to get to know you. I peeked in here many times when the doctors were examining you. You were all naked. Let me get a look at you. Oh, what a beautiful body you have. I can visit you every night. We can be friends. Oh, you're so pretty. So nice. You didn't mean that. I'll forgive you. If you don't bite again, I'll untie you. Do you want to get untied?
Here are the keys, Dr. Savelli. I put the valise in the trunk of the car. Thanks, Renata. Good night. Good night.
Tomorrow, we'll have the house to ourselves. Good night. Good night, darling. I'll go quietly. autopsy report on this victim. What caused the death? According to the examinations made, the autopsy report says that in all probability the victim's death was caused by massive hemorrhaging with consequent hypopolemical shock. The lacerations and deep wounds around her throat are almost of an animalistic origin, but it's uncertain. Uncertain, huh? That of an animal. We're not sure, sir. Hmm. Look at these scars. Don't they remind you of something? No. In our profession, one has to have a photographic memory. I remember having seen something similar. And so have you. Could be, but I don't recall, sir. Try to remember. A young American about a month ago found in a ravine near the villa of that industrialist. Masseri? Yeah, Count Masseri, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, sir. That young fellow who supposedly had gone out for a walk in the park mm -hmm. and the watchdogs didn't know it. That's yes, so. but that fellow's wounds were caused by the protruding rocks of the precipice when he fell. Now, these... Now, what do you suppose caused these wounds? The hay? Well, perhaps a couple of hungry dogs before the local police found the cadaver. There are five different fingernail scratches. Distinct one from the other. They aren't scratches of an animal. Seems funny that this should bring to mind a story my old grandmother used to tell. What story did your grandmother tell? Fantastic tales of country people. It was something that happened when she was a little girl in her village. The story of a man who, on the nights of the full moon, was transformed into a wolf. And he'd attack everyone ferociously and brutally who crossed his path. How about that? Oh, and then she'd say, if anyone is born on Christmas Eve, he will turn into a werewolf. Imagine now. I got a hunch that that story of your grandmother's wasn't exactly a fantasy. Let's go, Eddie. Wait for me in the car. I have a phone call to make. I want to get in touch with that Count Messeri. This way, sir. Good day. Inspector Modica, homicide. Inspector, sit down, won't you? Thanks. 
If you've come here to inform me of what occurred last night at the clinic, I already know about it. I've been notified early this morning, Inspector. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember me, but um, we met about a month ago under unpleasant circumstances, sorry to say. I was investigating the unfortunate accident of a relative of yours who fell into a gulch trying to escape some watchdogs who didn't know him. Certainly. I recall, Inspector, I'm the father of the Daniela Messeri who saw that accident. It shocked her so that we had to put her in that clinic and I have no idea what made her leave. Do you? Uh, unfortunately, we have another victim. Who is it, Dr. Savelli? No. Dr. Savelli's in bad shape, but the doctors hope to save her. Well, who is it? Early this morning, a few kilometers from the clinic, a body of a peasant girl was found outside her house. She was brutally murdered. I don't see how my daughter enters into this, Inspector. The signs of violence found on this young woman are identical with those of your relative. At the time, it was thought they were caused by his fall and dog bites. I'm afraid Daniela is terribly ill. Incurable, Inspector. I understand. And I'm very, very sorry. And I hope that one day science will find the answer to your daughter's problem. But unfortunately, I have a duty to perform. I have to find her before she can do any more harm. It's evident that you're supposing Daniel has come here seeking refuge with me. No, she is not. I assure you she isn't here. But in these cases, a father's word carries very little weight. Isn't that right? Will you just go ahead and do your job, Inspector? Look around for yourself. Interrogate whomever you like. I can assure you of my discretion. Excuse me. Daniela, she murdered Fabian. Irene. She murdered my husband and I hate her. I hate her. Take anything in place of these clothes, anything of yours? A skirt with various colors and a pretty brown shirt. And they were new, you know, not even worn yet. My poor husband hadn't even paid for these things yet. I, and a pair of black shoes, Inspector. Also new, right? No, but they were in perfect condition. This woman, you said that you've seen her well. I just returned to the house. I'd gone shopping, you see. I saw her very well. She came out of my house with my own blouse and skirt on. Mm. Oh, I'd recognize her all right. Uh -huh. That's her. Yes. Hmm. Arigi. Sir? 
send out a bullet to all stations and tell them to pick up this girl. She's wearing a brown blouse and a very colored skirt. Yes, sir. Ah, you already know this girl, huh? No, nah, we got her in our files. Oh, yeah? Who is she? A little petty thief. Yeah, huh? Well, you got to put her straight in prison. That's where she belongs. Just think, enter into a house to steal, come and frighten a person to death. Imagine the harm she could do. You've got to arrest her, Inspector. We'll do what we can. You can go oh. now, ma'am. But I want all my things. Don't forget that. Sure, her. sure. But when you find her, you will arrest her. Naturally. And you put her in prison, right? Of course, Al. You go home and don't worry about a thing. As soon as we find her, we'll call you, eh? Goodbye now. Goodbye, Inspector. <laughs> myself very lucky, you know. Yes? How come? Because I bumped into you. I mean, because we met. I would have had bad trouble if we hadn't met, you know. Honest. I simply had to get away. It was suffocating. I couldn't stand it anymore. It's my husband. He's very jealous. Uh, well, so he's jealous. So what? Right? But he blows up if I just look at a guy, you know. I don't want to go back to my husband. There isn't any real hope. Naturally, if he blows up. <laughs> well, it isn't funny. You men will never understand us women. See what he did, my husband? When he gets mad, he's worse than an animal. And look at this. It still hurts when I touch it. And there, I've got bruises all over, you uh, see? Uh, I couldn't stay there. Will be in the city. Look out! <laughs> You aren't married, I guess. <laughs> Come on, now, we're almost there. He always said he'd rather see me dead than see me with another man. One thing is certain, I'm not going to go back. What if your husband calls you and asks you to go back? I'll not go back to him again, don't you see? I don't blame you. Look, uh, you got any place to stay? No, not really. No problem, then. If you want to stay with me, come to my place, if you like it. You can call it your home. It's a nice little house. All the comforts. No one comes there. Just a friend who comes from Milan once a month. We share the apartment, you see, and we do each other a favor every now and then. <laughs> ah, that feels better. I've made myself comfortable. You should do the same as I do. Uh -huh. You like someone to help you undress. You're right, honey. It's more exciting that way. Get your hands off me, you pig! Hey, what is this? Do you think I'm an idiot? Look. You don't think for a minute I fell for that story of the jealous husband with the hands, you ran away from home? Who do you think you're fooling? You can't imagine what sad stories I hear from cunts like you. <laughs> Some of you bitches come out with the sob story about mom in the hospital or the baby in the orphanage. Get out of here! Get out of here! <laughs> you're forgetting, baby. <laughs> this is my house. Oh, I see you want to play. You'd like me to rape you, eh? Okay, I'll play that game. It'll be more exciting for us. I'd like that. You ready? Here I come. Come on, you big horse. I'm going to rape you. Rape you. I don't play, no, but 
I know the game. Too bad. We might have played a couple of games together. You can't imagine how relaxing it could be playing this game. Oh, yes, I can imagine. <laughs> Very relaxing. It sure is. No, really. I believe you're a professor, but I came here to speak to you about something else. Speak to me. I'm listening to you. It seems that your guess was right. About that theory on lycanthropy, I mean, Daniele Messeri's case. I, I came to the same conclusion myself, although I can't give any scientific explanations. But how do you explain today's murder? It was a sunny day. Oh, uh, why? Attributing it to Daniela Massetti? No question about it. The description I got from the doorman of the girl he saw entering the apartment with the victim was perfect. Very colored skirt, brown blouse, and the identification of the photograph. Listen to this. When Daniela Massetti was 13 years of age, she was raped by a brute. It was perfectly natural that the unfortunate incident should change her character. She's suffering from ancestral complexes, you see. Based on what? You must know that the Maceres used to speak of what occurred 200 years ago to the family. But they attributed the old tale to legend. But soon, in our poor Daniela's mind, it became a reality, supported by a portrait. She sees her own face in it. A resemblance to it leads her to think of reincarnation, you see. And now she is convinced her ancestor and she are one and the same. 200 years later? One and the same? We are all selves belonging to one immense entity that's universal and to us remains unknown. Seems we're surrounded by the occult. And so occult are also the processes of reincarnation. A very interesting theory. And somewhat fascinating. And logical. Think for a moment of the phenomenon of telepathy. And apparitions and those who dream. Those who are ill and recover through faith, for example. Hmm. All this does not justify today's murder. I'm sure there is justification for it. We mustn't forget in a mind like Danielle is two important facts. The conviction of her being the reincarnation of her ancestor and her repulsion for the sex act. Now try to imagine what might happen when these two elements come together. Irene, Daniela's sister, arrives from America with a good-looking husband. Daniela is probably attracted to him, but her sexual phobia predominates. There's a plenilunium, a full moon night, and Daniela submits to its influence. When the spirit of a dead person penetrates somebody that's, um, obsessed, the latter follows the destiny of that reincarnated spirit. And so then, Daniela starts with luring her brother-in-law to exactly the same place where her ancestor was killed, understand? And there in the woods, possessed by lycanthropic fury, she kills her brother-in-law. Her mind breaks down, you see, at this point. What happens? Disassociation, schizophrenia. I know this is the case with Daniela. I've had her under observation for over a month. Now the next planet, Lulim. Daniela senses this mysterious summoning. So she kills that woman in the hospital to escape. Wait a minute. The, uh, autopsy on that peasant woman revealed that she had sexual relations minutes before her death. I believe it. No doubt she met with her friend and probably was making love, that woman. Daniela, having seen them in the act, still under the hypnotic spell of the moon, incensed by her sexual phobia, kills. She begins to roam around aimlessly, doing things which seem to be rational. No burglarizing and thieving. Finally, she encounters that Romeo, or broken down Don Juan. While feigning to offer her protection, he convinces her to go to his apartment with him, where again she experiences the dreaded violence experienced at 13. Daniela rebels, and so she kills her fourth victim. aren't running anymore. It's late. You'll catch your death of cold staying there. You want a lift? Come here. There are no more buses till tomorrow. You want to ride with me? You're welcome. If you don't live too far, I'll take you home. Thank you. But I'm not from around here. I, I live too far away. I don't know where to go. Excuse me. Listen, my house is only a couple of kilometers up the road. If you like, I can put you up for the night. It's better than staying outside in this weather, right? That's how it is. 
Everyone's got to make a living somehow. I work in film. Do you have to do such dangerous work? Yes, ma'am. No, it's not so bad. In the beginning, it seemed pretty dangerous. Stuntman, that's how I make my living. It's really not that bad after all. For the moment, I live in this western business, where they produce westerns. I have lots of time, lots of time to rehearse. I do falls and hard jumps for lots of big stars. They're afraid. It's too risky. Hey, you haven't said a great deal, have you? I guess you've had some bad experiences with men. Well, you don't have to worry. I won't bother you. You go upstairs and I'll sleep here. Listen, the women I've had up to now have always come to me of their own free will, understand?
Daniela, cut this, will you? Right here. That's it. Thanks. When it comes to preparing these gadgets, I'd rather do it myself. I must be certain I'm not running any risks, Daniela. Yep, you gotta know your business. Gotta be on the alert always. Otherwise, it's kaput. Daniela. It's a whole month you're here now. So I've been thinking, you know what? Imagine how nice it would be if we lived together like other people. I mean, if we had a house of our own. We seem to get along very well together. I don't know how you feel about it, but I like living with you. I'd like you to think about it, Daniela. I saw a nice apartment in the village. I'll take you to see it. If it's okay with you, I'll put a down payment on it. Then we'll go and buy some furniture, fix it up real nice. I got some money for the way, I have a lot of work coming up. So we'll be all right. I'll do all I can to make you happy, Daniela. Daniela, you haven't told me what you think about it. So what do you think? Daniela? Daniela, darling, where have you been? I've been worried. Where have you gone? No, please, I can't tell you where I am. Please listen to me. Daniela! Listen, darling. Wait a minute, let me talk first. Daniela. Father, let me tell you, this is important. I've been anxious to tell you this, honest. First of all, I ask forgiveness for what I've done to you and Irene. It was my illness, Father, that made me do all those horrible, despicable things. But now, something's happened, something wonderful that's making me well again. I met a man. And I love him, and he's made me really happy. So you mustn't be worried. I'm so much in love. I've got to go. Don't hang up. I'll call again soon. No, Daniela, listen. Goodbye. been telling you guys she's some piece, huh? What do you want? What do you want? 
to see if you're a good wet. Show us how you fucked up. Oh. You fuck. oh. We're going to fix your good baby. We're going to rip you apart. Oh. Come on, you cunt. Show us your tits. Daniela! 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 Here she is! After and she came all over the place. <laughs>
It's your turn. I'll call him. Hang on. Just a moment. Hello? Got a phone call. Alvaro. Hey, Alvaro. Hello. Hey. <laughs> hey. We searched that Luca Mondini's place. You know, the kid that worked as stuntman for the cinema, the kid they found murdered, stabbed to death in his house? Uh, what appears to be an abandoned farm. Obviously, you didn't find anything interesting. Got news for you. Do you want to know? All right, Eddie. Out with it. I went to that house today myself. You'd be amazed. You won't believe this. You know what I found there, Inspector? A brown blouse and a multicolored skirt. What did you say? You heard it, and that's not the only information. You see, sir, I checked around in the nearby neighborhood, and you know what I found? I met an old lady in the market. I talked to her. She's one of those busybodies, you know the kind. I asked about Luke Mondini, and she said he was a nice boy, and that for a month before he died, he was living with a beautiful blonde. And so I showed the woman that beautiful photo of Daniela. Oh, my Lord, there's no doubt. That's her, she said. That's the girl. Marvelous, Adi. Hello, Laurenti. Inspector Modica. Yeah, that's right. Listen, I want to know to whom those fingerprints belong, the ones they found on that knife that killed that stock man. Yeah, you know, that, uh, that Luca Mondini. Yeah, that's right. I'll wait. There's no question about it. There was a full moon the night that kid was murdered, and I'm willing to bet my job, Arigi, that Daniela Misseri killed that kid, too. Yes? They belong to a criminal. And he got killed the same night in that fire of the barn?
Thank you, Lorraine. You can go home, Eddie. It's late. Thank you, sir, but I've still got some work to do. It's incredible. This woman disappears for a whole month. And despite all our efforts, nobody can find her. All of a sudden, she calls her father and tells him that she's cured. That she's happy. But she can't tell him where she is. Now we find out she's been living with a young man who gets killed by a, by a stranger. The same stranger gets burned to death in what seems to be an accidental fire. Now, we know he's a well-known criminal, the friend of other two criminals, who mysteriously disappear. We don't know where or how. I can't help it. But in all of this, I suspect only one person, Daniela Messeri. Where is she? Where can she be? I'm telling you, sir, this Daniela Messeri is going to drive us all to the nut house. Mark my word. What is this? The werewolf, the moon, all night long. I dream things that are awful. I have nightmares, all kinds of spooky dreams. By God, three nights ago, my wife told me I was yelling as if I was mad. The werewolf of Salis, the forest of Salis. Beware of the forest. The forest of Salis. The forest of Salis. Did you say the forest of solace? Yeah.
Turn on the headlights. Daniela's sister, died in a mental hospital on September 23, 1968. Count Maseri committed suicide. Obviously, the names of persons and places have been changed, and any reference to actual persons and events is purely coincidental. 